Psalm 46, reading verses 1 to 7. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heat and rage, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered this voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. May the Lord add more blessing upon the reading of his holy word. Let us pray. Our gracious Lord, loving Heavenly Father, thank you for this great opportunity that we can be with you in this prayer meeting. Dalangin namin, Panginoon, na mawala lahat ang mga hadlang para po di kami makalapit sa inyong banal na harapan. Dalangin pa rin namin ang inyong pong tagapagsalita na maging daluyan po siya ng inyong pong pagmamahal. Talk to us, O Lord, through your servant, for we ask all of these things in the most precious name of our Lord and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
Magandang gabi mga kapatid. Ang ating mensahe ng gabi ay pinamagatan na natin the coming or the filling of the Holy Spirit. At mababasa natin to sa Acts chapter 2. Uh, before tayo magpatuloy, umingi muna tayo ng gabay at uh, tulong sa Panginoon para bigyan tayo ng karunungan sa pag-aaral natin ganyan. Let's pray. Ang banal na makapangyarihan sa lahat, kami po yung nagpapasalamat at nagpupuri sa inyong pangalan sa pagkakataw na inyong binigay sa amin upang kami po yung makapag-aaral na inyong salita at humihingi po kami ng wisdom, understanding sa gabing ito upang matutunan po namin at uh, may isa buhay ang mga uh, pag-aaralan namin ng gabi at uh, ganun rin po ay makita sa aming buhay. Uh, lahat ng ito ay aming dinadalangin sa matamis pa ng Panginoong Jesus. Amen. So, the coming or the filling of the Holy Spirit. So, <clears throat> ang Holy Spirit is um, ma kakonek din natin siya to the day of the Pentecost um, when the first this is the first time na uh, bumaba yung Holy Spirit para i-feel ang mga um, Kristiyano nung um, after mamatay ni Jesus Christ so bakit nga ba tinawag na day of the Pentecost so it came from the Greek word Pentecoste, which means 50th. Um, so around 50 days after Jesus' resurrection is yun yung day na bumba yung Holy Spirit. So kaya siya tinawag na Pentecost. So who is the Holy Spirit? So he is the third person of the Trinity. So aside from that, um, mapapag-aralan rin natin ngayong gabi kung um, sino at kung ano ang, ang ginagawa ng Holy Spirit sa ating mga Christians. So, Holy Spirit. Um, first is, sino nga ba siya? So, or ano nga ba siya? So, Holy Spirit, he, the Holy Spirit is in every Christian. So, He is in everyone who is born again. So, John 3, 5 says, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Romans 8, 9 says, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you now. If any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So the moment we received Christ as our Savior, the Holy Spirit comes to live in our hearts and our body becomes his temple. So 1 Corinthians 6, 9-20 to says, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you? which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Pero, marami sa ating mga Christians um, do not allow the Holy Spirit to occupy every room in His own temple. So that is the reason all are not filled with the Holy Spirit. So, um, so, sino nga ba ang Holy Spirit? He is in every Christian. And second is, His power is for all. So, ano nga bang power na to? So, this is not only for the favored few. So, Acts 4.2 And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So, the mother in the home, the schoolgirl and boy, 
and those who are confined in their homes, office, or workshop, all need to be filled with the Holy Spirit, just as much as those who are called to special service. So, hindi lang to para sa mga pastor, sa mga Bible woman, sa mga deacon, sa mga church workers, ang pagiging filled ng Holy Spirit. Ito ay para sa lahat. Hindi ibig sabihin na kung wala kang ministry sa loob ng church, hindi mo na kailangan mapuno ng banal na espiritu. Mali yun. Yung iyong workplace, yung iyong bahay, o kung saan ka man madalas na gumugugol ng oras mo, yun ang iyong ministry. Yung mga tao doon ay pinagmamasdan ka, yung kilos mo, kung paano ka magsalita, lahat ng ginagawa mo. Kaya kung hindi ka puno ng banal na espiritu, hindi nila makikita ang pagkakaiba mo sa kanila. So, kailangan mong mapuno o ma-filled with the Holy Spirit. So, hindi lang ito kailangan. Hindi lang ito, um, hindi mo lang ito basta need. This is also God's command. So, God commands us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 5.18 For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. So gaya, gaya nga ng sinabi ko kanina, every one of us needs to be filled with the Holy Spirit. This is not optional or a high standard of living that can only be attained by chosen few. This is a definite command to all God's children. And if we are not filled with the Holy Spirit, we are living in disobedience. So, before we can be filled with the Holy Spirit, there are some conditions that we must do for us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So, ano nga yung mga con- con- condition na yun para ma-fill tayo ng Holy Spirit? First is, yield everything to God. Romans 6.13 Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. And Romans 12.1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So we need to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. We must hand over the key of every room of our heart. Let him cleanse it and remove everything that is displeasing displeasing to him. Let him have full control of our lives. Paano nga bang full control of our lives? We need to yield our will. This is usually the hardest and the last thing that Christian yields to Christ. For the will is the citadel of the soul, and if he has the will, he has all. Pag na-yield na natin ang ating will sa Holy Spirit, he has control over all of us. So once we yield to God, we can now claim his promise. So we can now claim the Holy Spirit. Claim God's promise through faith. So Paul prayed that the Ephesian church might be filled with all the fullness of God. So Ephesians 3.19 And to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Fulfill the conditions and then believe God will fill you. The filling of the Holy Spirit is yours by right, then claim the gift. It is yours by right, but you do not gain possession of it till, until you claim it. Again, the decision is ours to make. We need to decide for ourselves if we want the Holy Spirit to fill and control us. Give Him control. Once the Holy Spirit has control of our lives, He will work in us and through us. So once that condition is filled, or once the conditions of being filled is met, we have yielded our, um, our everything to God, to the Holy Spirit, 
we have claimed um, and um, we have claimed the Holy Spirit. So now the Holy Spirit will will work in us. So the Holy Spirit, once the Holy Spirit starts working in our lives, He will give us victory. So He will deliver us from our old nature, from the flesh, and from the devil's power. Just like from our theme this month, He is able to deliver us. Yun yung pinakauna. He will first deliver us from our old nature, from our flesh. And from that, from the devil's power. Do not make the mistake of thinking that when you are filled with the Spirit, there is no longer any spiritual conflict. On the contrary, the fight will be more fierce than before. But God gave us weapons to use against the devil, um, according to Ephesians 6, 11 to 17. Um, you can just go to your Bible and read it. So, hindi tayo pinabayaan ng Panginoon. Binigyan niya tayo ng mga weapons, mga armors uh, for us to fight against the devil. So remember, it was after the Lord Jesus was filled with the Spirit at His baptism that Satan tempted Him in the wilderness. But He came back in the power of the Spirit as per Luke 4.14. He will not only give us victory, He will also teach us. John 14, 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So the Holy Spirit will help us remember the lessons that were previously taught to us. 1 Corinthians 4, 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. We can only understand the word of God and spiritual things through the teachings of the Holy Spirit. Not only he will give us victory, not only he will teach us, he will also glorify Christ through us. John fourteen sixteen. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. This is one of the special works of the Holy Spirit. The one who is spirit-filled person is more taken up with Christ than his own experience. He is more concerned about Christ's glory than about his own reputation. And not only he will give us victory, not only he will teach us, not only he will glorify Christ, but he will produce fruit in us. The Holy Spirit will produce fruit in us. Galatians 5, 22-23 But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. These are the results of being filled with the, with the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit will manifest in our lives. So there will be honoring and obeying parents. And for some, it will be easier to obey and honor their parents. As per Ephesians 6, 1 and 2. There will be faithful service rendered to employers. As per Ephesians 6, 5 and 9. Mas madali na magtrabaho. Mas masaya ka. Wala, wala nang reklamo. Lumalayo ka na rin doon sa mga empleyado, mga asama mo na pa na reklamo. So, one time lang ba itong uh, pagiging filled ng Holy Spirit? So, how, how, how do we keep or how to keep being filled with the Holy Spirit? So this new life needs to be maintained. The apostles were filled again and again, and so it is not a one-for-all filling. So hindi lang to one time na once ma-fill ka ng Holy Spirit, forever na yung 
filled ka ng Holy Spirit. So, we need to decide every day na ask natin ng Holy Spirit to fill us. We cannot depend on one blessing or one spiritual experience to keep us going for the remainder of our spiritual life. Therefore, there are some things we must do if we are to be filled always with the Holy Spirit. First, take time alone with God each day. Matthew 6.6 6, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father, which is in secret, and thy Father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. We need fresh supplies of grace, strength, and power each day, and we can only obtain this through prayer and reading of God's Word. We also need to confess instantly. If anything comes between you and God, ask for forgiveness and cleanse and cleansing right away. And aside from taking time alone with God each day, you must always obey the Holy Spirit. Acts 5.32 And we are His witnesses of these things, and so is also the Holy Ghost whom God hath given to them that obey Him. So we must be sensitive to His leading and obey instantly. Whether it be to do something for Him, to speak a word for Him, let go of something or someone which He may show you is a weight in your spiritual life. We must be sensitive. We must always obey the Holy Spirit for us to be filled daily with the Holy Spirit. And lastly, do not do nothing to grieve Him. Do nothing to grieve Him by allowing sin, however small in your heart and life. So Ephesians 4.30 And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. When this happens, the Holy Spirit can no longer use us. So, sino nga bang Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit, He is in every Christian. He is in every believer. He is in every uh, everyone who accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior. And uh, His power is for all. Hindi lang ito para sa mga may ministry sa church. It is a command that everyone should be filled with the Holy Spirit. And for us to be filled with the Holy Spirit, we need to do something, and that is to yield everything to God. Hayaan natin ang Panginoon at ang Holy Spirit na mag-control sa ating buhay. Mahirap man, but once we let the Holy Spirit and let God um, take over our lives, you will definitely um, not regret it. And then, once we yield everything to God, claim God's promise through faith, that the Holy Spirit will fill us. So once the Holy Spirit filled us, He will give us victory. He will teach us he will glorify Christ in us and He will produce fruit in us. Yan ang makikita ng mga kapitbahay mo, mga katrabaho mo. Ang difference ng isang mananampalaya, mananampalataya sa hindi mananampalataya. And also, we need to decide that we need to maintain this, this life as a spirit-filled Christian and uh, by maintaining it we need to take time alone with God each day and always obey the Holy Spirit be sensitive sa Holy Spirit sa kanyang leading and do not grieve the Holy Spirit that's our um, lesson from God's Word tonight magandang gabi mga kapatid and God bless, God bless us all
Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 to 21. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 to 21. Let us pray. Thank you again, dear Father, for giving us an opportunity to give the portion we have entrusted to us. And as we give the tithes, missions, pledges, and all other offerings, bless this substance that it will be used to glorify your name and advance your kingdom. This we ask and pray in the most mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. Our gracious Lord, loving Heavenly Father, thank you Lord, sana tapos na inyo pong gawain ang prayer meeting. Salamat po Ama sa inyo pong mga salita na punong-puno ng aral at gabay para po magamit namin sa aming pong pamumuhay araw-araw. And so we close this evening prayer meeting. Bless us and protect us, even the whole household of faith. Even also, Lord, as we pray its family for the prayer items in our church bulletin, guide us and give us wisdom so we can pray its item assigned to us with love and concern. Be with us and bless us, for we ask all of these things in the most mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.